band. All the instrumentalists to stay near, stay on the front seats, so that we move fast together. You can have your seats, you can open your Bibles, your notebooks, your iPads, your tablets, your... Just look at your neighbor and smile at them. I'll start by saying Happy Father's Day to all of you fathers. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Happy Father's Day to the fathers in the house and them who are going to be fathers soon. The fathers doing push-ups. The fathers interceding. Praise the Lord. Amen. So today we have a, a Father's Day message that I want to share with you. And, and, and it's my faith and my belief that God is going to bless you in a great way. Praise the Lord. Today is, is Father's Day and I thank God, our ultimate father, like mom said, uh, God has been good to us to even gift us with this beautiful, beautiful day that we are breathing today. And Father's Day, uh, it's, it's reason so that it's now beginning to get some, some, some uh, attention for a long time. Uh, fathers uh, don't get the attention they deserved for one reason or another. That's better. Thank you so much. All right. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Let's go to the book of John chapter 4. I'm going to read something for you. And I'm going to illustrate. The reason I came with the oranges is not because it's witchcraft. It's not witchcraft. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Today people are not smiling. Is it no smiling day? I'm a... I'm at the memory of fathers just begin to hurt you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do some few illustrations if you, if, if you promise to enjoy the sermon. Yeah. But, but if I notice you're not enjoying, uh, I'll just stick to the oranges since, since I exposed myself early. Karibu Nisana for the visitors who have come for the first time. This is Springs Crisco Church. If you see any imperfection, kindly bear with us. We, we just came here the other day. We are still building. Every, every Sunday you'll find something new. We're going to fix the window panes, paint the whole thing, red carpet, the whole floor, uh, the altar, better sound. We are working on great stuff. Tell your neighbor, great stuff are happening. We will have better lighting, better, better everything. For now, do not despise the days of humble beginning, okay? But we thank God for so far. Are you happy? You love the space? Yes. Ah, cool, cool. Yeah, we're going to have fun. Amen. Amen. Anyone ready for the word? Woo! You guys, you guys. Uh... If I minister at your level, we are going to die of boredom. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Can you? Are you ready for the word of God? Yeah! Tell your neighbor to pretend. Come on. Are you ready for the word of God? Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. Father's Day. So today we will share a message. Uh, I was struggling to come up with a title, to be honest, because uh, the reason I was struggling with it, because I, I, it's not easy to come up with a, a, a title for Father's Day. I was telling my sweetheart that it's easier for every other. Normally, I, I come up with the title even sometimes before the message, but this one was hard. And uh, my favorite was uh, the one I, I used to before, and it's uh, finding uh, Father God in God, the, finding, finding the Father in God the Father. You remember that message? What's the, what's the writing? Your, your eyes are judging me. What, 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 what is it called? Finding Father, finding Father. Finding, huh? You see, it's not easy when you say it. Please look. <laughs> finding, I, I know Brian must remember. Yes, finding a father in Father God. Clap for him, praise the Lord. Yes, that message I taught it like 10, 12 years ago, something like that. 12 years ago. Yes, 12 years ago. It was, uh, I didn't want to call this message that because the customers who, who were there when I was teaching that word may think that uh, it is the same. And it is not the same. So, so I just twitched it a little bit and I called it meeting 
that in Father God. And then that word, it is, a, it is a continuation of that word of 12 years ago in a different kind of an abstract. Praise the Lord. Amen. And that word was so powerful. It came with so much healing and deliverance as I'm trusting God for you today. Amen. In case you are interested, it's available. In, in case you're interested with a higher version of yourself, you're going to experience God in this place. Anyone wants to experience God? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, so it was a beautiful message, and I, the reason I, I tagged uh, my son Brian along into into this memory is because I remember that's the night after I ministered that word, God visited him and filled him even with the Spirit. He lived. I remember seeing him uh, glowing under the glory of God on the altar, crying. Uh, you know, without not the ones you guys are doing nowadays, amen. Not these ones, praise the Lord. No, 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 that one disperses the anointing, eh? praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, the, the, the power of God was just over him, and he was never the same. The, the, I, I saw his life change before my very eyes. That was a beautiful, beautiful word. Praise the Lord. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Tell me, praise the Lord. So, yes, I've been in this for a while. 12 years ago, I was still teaching. This year, October, I will be clocking 18 years in ministry. Praise the Lord. Yes, I'm going to get an ID. Amen. Anyway, praise the Lord. I'm trying to get you guys to be excited. I do not know how to minister to to two relaxed people. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, it's because uh, Bridget got married. Because the brothers are all looking like they are mourning. Because of Bridget, I go happy. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Fathers, let me read something for you. I want you to know that fathers are the reason I call this message meeting dad in Father God. It's not because that the term father is not special enough, it is special. But I'm trying to connote something here that you have all read this, uh, this uh, quote that says, any man can be a father, but it takes a special person to be a dad. So, so, so the whole meaning behind the name dad is that you have gone behind you have gone beyond the veil of just talking with God, of just ha seeing God as Father God, praise the Lord. Yeah. And you have be gotten to a place where you have experienced who he is, that you somehow have to get a special word for him and call him Dad. Ah, come on now. Yeah. So, 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 so the metaphor or what the name dad depicts is that you have tasted, you have experienced who God is, his fatherliness, that he has changed from just being a father of all creation. Because the name father is a bit ambiguous sometimes. Even other religions see God as a father, okay? But going beyond just the name father, and you begin to experience who he is in full measure, is gonna change your life before your very own eyes. Amen. And when you know God as a father, your behavior, literally your belief system, your confidence, everything will change because of your experience. I have mentored so many people over the years others are pastors one of them is a bishop now one of them actually is a, a big person in sitam and all that and i also have people who are just began to mentor the other day like zara <laughs> zara is my daughter she was singing here <laughs> it was it was not because i didn't want to meet her I, she had no shoulder <laughs> praise the lord amen. hallelujah amen so but uh, of all the people who call me dad, who call me father, uh, because of who I am, because I'm a dad to Kayla and Zara, my daughter, 
when we have a, this wonderful girl who is our neighbor who, who loves us so much, she's just where we live. She comes and stays with us for quite a while, and even the mother is angry. Where is my daughter? You know, she hides to just stay with us. And we quickly notice that it's because somehow she has further issues. And it's important, and I was wondering how to tell the mother who does not believe in God that it's important we hang with her. So I normally create some reasons. Uh, to, uh, I want them to, I have new toys, let them go and play with Kayla. Then she ignores Kayla, comes to spend time with me to ask me questions and just, just to stay there. Because I'll tell you what fatherhood is. Come on now. Amen. Are you enjoying? Yes. Now, I've seen that there's a difference between the other children, of course there is a difference, but I want you to see it in a different, in light of what I'm saying. When we are hanging with Kayla, and when other children are hanging with us, there is certain confidence that Kayla has, certain freedom that Kayla has. Even around me, Kayla is not even careful. You understand? She's not even... She does not have a formula of addressing me. She can address me at any time, anyhow, anything. Sometimes actually she's like, I'm tired of sleeping alone. And she walks at night, walks, and just comes where I am, slides, and takes my arms and wraps herself. She's using my arms. Praise the Lord. <laughs> then later on in the night when I hear somebody snoring and kicking me, because she's not like an organized sleeper, you know. <laughs> so she sleeps like a starfish. Praise the Lord, Camille. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, there's people who are sleep like a starfish, then they keep moving. The whole night they're moving. So their head will end up anywhere. So they normally have fun. They're like, I'll surprise myself to see where my head will end up today. <laughs> so it's like a trick, you know? So that's Kayla. Because she has experienced who I am. So her behavior around me is different from any other person who may even call me father, who may even call me dad. But her dad carries a different weight because she knows who I am. Ah, come on now. And because she knows who I am, her manifestation, her behavior, her confidence. Ah, come on now. And even it flows down even to her life because she knows of who she is. You remember that teaching? from our presbyter that you need to know who you are and of whom you are yeah. ah, come on now yeah. so if you listen to that sermon or if you have ever heard such a sermon this will be a beautiful one to cement that and i want us to look at uh, two stories here in the bible one of the most profound stories uh, that uh, have ever been given by jesus and as i read this i want to bring your attention to to the very fact that the boy child Come on now. Has been extremely under attack. And even the people, this is the sad thing, there's people attempting to help the boy child. And the people even attempting to help the boy child, some of them, the most they can do is feed them with some, you know, broadways and some tea. The formula they are even using cannot even help them. And, and, and the world has been treating the boy child as if they are irrelevant. There is even a movement of feminism. If you are a feminist, please give me your number. <laughs> Every time I'm under pressure, I look for feminists. I would like to just have an argument with you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I want to smash you with wisdom. Amen? There's this movement that has been there for a while now. That a, that a woman can do what a man can do. And that is, I don't believe it. It's not possible. It's impossible. You will not find someone who supports women like I do because I support my beautiful wife. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I support her all over. She trusts me with, her, with advice of what can I wear. And I'm like, I bought that Louis Vuitton shirt. It can do with this kitenge. And that straw set can knock them dead. Are you understanding? Praise the Lord. I'm like, now, 
he do those earrings there and just say Ramashanda. <laughs> and you'll be a walking breakthrough. I'm telling you. Praise the Lord. Amen. I have two daughters. Biological. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I support women. But this is this is what I believe. And it's based also backed by scriptures. I believe a woman cannot do what a man can do. And I also believe a man cannot do what a woman can do. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. There's, there should be no competition. I don't know what lie of the devil came from where to come and deceive us. First of all, if we go even to the basic of the basic, women cannot do what men can do. I, I, I just ran six weeks building this church. And, 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 and it was not a joke together with everybody who was helping us and the people on the ground. But believe you me, the work we are doing here, I would not have hired women to do it. In the spirit of balance and gender equality, I would not do that. <laughs> that would be the spirit of idiocy and wastage of money. Because you see, we did a high roof. And, and when we are building, because I believe the work of God should be done with more competence than the work of, than our own work. So, so I was not playing games. I actually told the fundies, I'm not here as a pastor. Don't call me a pastor. So when we are building, I'm not a pastor. I'm your contractor. You've got to listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> because sometimes they hide behind calling you pastor so that they can continue with their incompetence. To them, no. So, so one of the targets I give them, if you're a fundi, minimum one day is a hundred pieces. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Some of you are looking at me. Is it Happy Father's Day or something? <laughs> are you understanding? Yes. Yeah, yeah. In building, if you want to move fast, that's, you, you've got to have targets. Yeah. I keep, in some place they would surpass it. Do you know what I would do? I will give them bonuses. And, 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 and it was, it was kind of cool. So, several of them got so, so much proud. But let me tell you, it's not a joke to lay up 10 kg stones, 100 of them. I want those feminists to come who believe can do what a man can do. And I'll give them 100 stones. And, and, and I'm telling you, they're going to have some body problems. There's no competition. God created us uniquely, wonderfully and fearfully made. I cannot try. I was there at the labor ward. Each, each of my baby, when they were being born, I was there with the scissors to cut the umbilical cord. Are, are you understanding? And I don't want to be a girl. I don't want to be a lady. I'm okay. I thank the Lord. And, and I can't say what, what, what mom can do, I can do that. No, I can't do I can't do that. She, her strengths are unique. Ah, oh, come on now. There's no competition between male and female. We're supposed to complement each other. Actually, our own creation is a complement to each other. The woman was created and when she was presented as naked as she was, to Mr. Adam. Adam did not go like, I love your hair. No. Adam went like, whoa, man. Oh, wow, man. And then what that means is that you're a man with a womb. You're, you are me. You came from me. From my ribs. Ah, oh, come on now. The Lord put me in, in sli into sleep and Cut off my ribs. And actually right now, scientifically proven, men left ribs are fewer. And women have more ribs than men. It is, it, 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 read sometimes. Tell your neighbor, read sometimes. <laughs> sometimes just read something. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Are you enjoying the service? I'm hoping you do. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So from the ribs of the man, they were ripped off by God and out of that, he created the woman because the woman was already inside man. 
Because everything that you need in your life is already within your reach or in you. Praise the Lord. Amen. And God pulled from the man. Come on now. A woman. A woman. And this was a concept of what was to come. Because the picture of Jesus and the church is shown in the relationship of a man and a woman. The reason it has to be successful. Come here, darling. Come here. Yeah, come help me preach. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah! Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The picture of the, of the church is supposed to be portrayed and depicted by the family unit. It is through, from the family unit, praise the Lord, Amen. that we see the relationship of the church and Jesus. So God is the one who started the family. And he created us different. The woman is a man with a womb. So the woman was created to be a master nurturer. Nobody nurtures like women. That's why we cannot be women. Because men are not nurturers. I love Ethan. But I cannot stay the whole day with Ethan. I'll be suicidal. Are you understand? He loves slapping me, pulling my hair, beard. But somehow, they have strengths that we don't have. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are we together? Yes. Because women are naturals. They nurture. And as a woman, you have to be very careful because it is your very creation that will set you up to be trapped by the devil. You have to keep checking your womb, the womb of your spirit, the womb of your heart. Because you are a natural, then the devil does not need to kill you. He just needs to get you busy with the wrong seed. Because the same way you nurture love, you nurture businesses, you nurture a wonderful husband, the way Timothy has been nurtured. Mpaka kona kamari dadi kwa I didn't know he uh, can do that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And he has been checking it every five seconds. If it goes out. <laughs> you understand? He, he is natural. For Brian, he does not need a bling bling. When you look at him, he is natural. <laughs> it is clear. Praise the Lord. It is clear he cannot be trusted to feed Jasir. <laughs> I know it's a joke. It's a joke. It's a father's day joke, you know. It's a father's who just. Uh, but then what was how? Another story. Uh huh. You know, a little so good. Where's Joshua? Anyway, praise the Lord. Then we put the husband is the one belching. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Women are naturals. Men, we are not naturals. That's why God did not even give us breasts. We don't have that kind of patience. But yeah. Look at men. Uh, we can't even do a test. How long does Brian stay with Jasir? No, you give unampati amemshika. How long do you take kumpata bado amemshika? Sisemi kuongea. Unajua naweza ongea naye. So what, what men do? Ukimpatia mtoto, anachukua kiongea. That's very good. I'm going to see. Oh, we are not natural. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hata unaonanga greetings za wanaume wakisalimia watoto. They are dismissive greetings. Uja, ah, hi, Pedes. How is, how is home? Hey, hey, you know that? <laughs> yes, yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> There's no more introduction. They are dismissive. Because men are not naturals. Women are naturals. And the danger with being a natural is if God, if the devil, all he needs to do with women 
They strap them with the wrong seed, a seed of bitterness, and they hide that seed there. In your heart or in your soul. And guess what? The devil does not need to do anything. The woman will naturally nurture that seed. And that's why women, even after 20 years, 30 years, are still aching about kama. Ni, ni kama. Are you understand what I'm saying? Something that the mother said. And somehow, this is what I've learned in my eight years, uh, in the eighth year of our marriage, by the way. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. In our eight, year, eight years of marriage, one of the things that I've learned is that uh, what am I? <laughs> I've lost a thought. Amen. Devil returned my thought. Anyway, praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, one of the things about about women is that uh, when it comes to to, to 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 their nurturing character praise the lord Amen. the the uh, uh, most most scientists say that women don't forget quickly but it is not that they don't forget also even women forget it's just that because they are hot amen, amen. Uh, women forget as as much as men the difference is that women have a, they are a bit sensitive when it comes to uh, their emotions are a, a bit more sensitive because they are naturals. Amen? They care more. And because they care more, they, they, they remember more. Because they will remember the situation better than the man. Because the situation to the woman has contents of emotion. They, it, it contains feelings. So for us, we may not feel anything. But for her, she may remember easily because there is feelings tied to that memory. Are, are you getting me? Yeah. So, so what the enemy does, because she knows you're a natural, she will come and put a seed. So a seed of bitterness, anger, unforgiveness. Let people hurt you. And, and, and what you're going to do, he, he knows you will, your natural character of nurturing, you will nurture even that which is evil. With or without your permission. And it will self-destruct you. It will put you in your own bondage. As a woman. So, my question to you, ladies, what are you nurturing today? What are you nurturing? What's, 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 what's hovering in your spirit? What's hovering in your heart? What is in your belly? What is it that you're nurturing? Sometimes women nurture and, uh, uh, they, 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 and, and this is what I've discovered. This, this is the thought that I had lost about women. With my eight years experience, is that uh, women tend to remember the error ten times than the good things. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm not discussing you. You, you are, you are perfect, amen. <laughs> and you appreciate this perfect lady. <laughs> She's saying even the good. This Father's Day, I have the microphone. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes, I, I because sometimes uh, even in our own relationship, even with my relationship with Kayla and Zara, sometimes Kayla, like the other day, Kayla has been uh, making a lot of noise about about shoes. Every time I'm going out. Mom was coming and telling me, Na Kayla Lisema Uzipoleta via to the sports day. You know, threats were just hovering in the house. <laughs> and, and by the way, to be honest, I was forgetting, like every day I, I go out, I, I kept forgetting to buy her uh, school sports shoes. It's not like she doesn't have, just that I bought for Zara, and Kayla was like, I want new ones. I'm like, you're so spoiled. <laughs> huh? You need to know why our legs have a, a sole underneath, <laughs> made of skin. Because some of us went to school without shoes. 
I know some of you are too young to even fab on that. <laughs> yeah, we used to go without shoes. I don't know how we survived that. Because you would go to the toilets without shoes. <laughs> Sometimes it's raining. You can't even know that. If, anyway, praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, so, and the other day, so, but every day I would come. There's even a time I bought Kayla some clothes, some stuff, but I forgot shoes. The following day, the threats were serious. I was told that if you come with those shoes, don't even come. <laughs> Now, by the way, she was so bad, she does not, she didn't feel she needs to come and tell me that, so she said. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and mom went, and I said, okay, I'll be done with it. So I went and bought her uh, shoes, and, and bought two pairs. And mom looked at them and said, like, I never will Bought her two pairs, I was like, what, uh, before we get any more threats. And I remember asking Kayla, how come all these things that have been doing good you're not remembering? You keep making noise about shoes, uh, that I'm forgetting your sports shoes, your sports shoes. And I notice it is something even with ladies. Not just Kayla, not just mom, not just Masi, not just Mama Jasir. Ladies somehow, ah, come on now, C come on now, somehow remember that negative thing a little bit more than the good things. Why? Because they are naturals. And that negative things, because it spikes the pain. Come on now. It, it comes with a, a bit of, em, a, of a negative emotion. It is easier to remember. For us men, we don't remember because we don't tie emotions to certain things. Until we will get to men. You understand what I'm saying? So this is what the devil does. So he comes and because she knows mom is a natural, she's going to set you up to sow seeds that are going to affect your destiny. And if women, if you as a woman, you don't learn to let go of the seeds that are not godly, you will suffer. I'm telling you. And I can discern even at this moment, there's people here with seeds of bitterness. I can discern it right now. Praise the Lord. You have to surrender. You have to learn what is to forgive. One of the original meaning of forgiveness is to exhale, <sighs> to release. You have to learn how to let go. Praise the Lord. Amen. But women are naturals. My sister telling you psychologically to go pick it and bring it back so that someone can continue. Praise the Lord. You know they are naturals, so they also wonder why men we don't think. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> they normally think on our behalf and somehow trigger the hypnotic rhythm that somehow it will catch us by osmosis and we will know what to do. No, we don't. You, 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 uh, let, me, let me help the new married ladies. We don't get it as men. Just, just tell Timothy what you want. <laughs> Stop, stop hinting and asking, who need a kitchen? Who took a kitchen? One beer, a couple of beers, Jack. He won't get it. We are not that smart. I don't know why women want to be like us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You can have a seat shortly. Praise the Lord. Did you get that for women? So for women, the devil wants to trap you using your own strength. And I'm asking you, ladies, before we go further into this sermon, let go of every heartache. Because it's going to affect you. Because if you don't let go, you're, you do not have space for what God has for you. Some of the reasons some ladies take too long before they are married is because they carry so many baggages that they do not have clean space for the new thing God is about to bring. The Lord is saying, clean your house. Ah, come on now. You have to say, man, you see today we have stones at the altar. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Any anointing can show up, amen? 
And you just find yourself saying amen on the floor. Amen, praise the Lord. Can you say amen? Amen. You need to surrender negative things that were said by anyone. Are you understanding? You need to look back as ladies, what are those issues? And let me tell you, it affects you. Because ladies, you were created to glow. You are the beauty of men. Are you understanding? You were created to shine. Are you understanding? So, so, so what these issues do, they begin to take over your glow. Come on now. Yeah. You can't even smile, you can't even shine. You, you begin to, you, you, even have, you have even a curvaceous body, but somehow the darkness of the enemy makes you petite, you know? You just look, you know, just, everything God has blessed you disappears. The hair starts disappearing. The praise the Lord. The hair starts here. You become the, uh, a Chinese master. <laughs> you, you, you become gloomy. You become... No, 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 no! Let me tell you. You know, we also in this church, we normally have business Sundays. Let me tell you something that we normally talk a lot. The right attitude is everything. But before we even talk about attitude, the, 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 the energy is everything. People with the right energy even attract money. Sell better, even in businesses if you're in sales. Just the right energy. Let me ask you guys. Is there anyone here who has ever found something very nice you wanted to buy, but the reason you did not buy it was not the price, it was not the item, it was the bad energy of the seller? Anyone? Yes. Anyone? There are stones, anyone? <laughs> All right, praise the Lord. Okay, it's working, I knew. Uh, where is Nairobi University alumni? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Are you understanding? Yeah. Why? Energy. And that energy flows from your core. It does not flow because you're wearing uh, Gucci perfume. Mm -mm. Oh, am I like in a rapata tonsils? Or is it beautiful? You know it. <laughs> no, I'm a beginning, my brother. Praise the Lord. I know brothers, bachelors buy it and it's not for their body, it's for their socks. <laughs> yeah. Because those socks, they even have a very hard layer underneath. But they were not bought that way. <laughs> The layer is an accumulation of dirt over, over the last seven weeks. Praise the Lord. And he's there quarreling the Lord in the corner of the church. Where is, where is the will of God for my life, Lord? And the Lord is saying, So, so is the Lord. Amen. I'm ladies on a piano high five. Spot on. It's a joke, it's a joke. Praise the Lord. So for the woman, the devil wants to trap you. For the man, the devil wants to kill you. Why? Why does the devil want to kill men? Because men, you were created, you're the seed. Come back here, come back here. You keep doing trips, we'll, we'll feed you a lot of tea. Praise the Lord. Amen. So for the woman, she is a woman, a womb. Woman, a, a man with a womb. Are you getting it? Yeah. She nurtures. For the man, we are the seed giver. Father comes from the uh, Hebrew word pata, which means source, seed giver. So men carry seed. Come on now. Yeah. And the Bible says that the seed of the woman will hit the head of the snake. Are you understanding? And the seed of the woman comes from the man. Are you seeing that? Yeah. So we are not competitors. We are one. Are, are you understanding? Mm -hmm. so, so because she is the woman, the carrier of the seed. Ah, come on now. Yeah. Are we together? Yeah. Any problem you give it to that woman and you give a seed of solution, she's going to take it. And, and just make it good. You can see when ladies are married, when they get to that house, they find a tray. 
the, 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 the most qualified man normally has a tray with the Taramea cups, you know? <laughs> you know, I was telling you, one of them was telling me, you have a tattoo, you have a And let me tell you, and the man is feeling very powerful. <laughs> we have cups, I don't know what's wrong with you. <laughs> And the spoons, I don't know why they buy them. Una chota ugari, you know? It just, it just gives up. The spoon just gives up. You know? but, but when the woman comes into that situation, she can see your idea. Ah, come on now. She can see the, the seed of the idea. But she takes that seed and gives it life. Now all of a sudden, Timothy is there just admiring the cup. is like... <laughs> <laughs> just very nice. Now, the funny thing is, the the sister is like, as you did you What are you fussing about? Praise Lord. Anyway, praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, we will talk about the other things, amen. amen. We will talk about the disaster in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> the underwears, me also. It's like rambos there. like kidding. If you can only see the spirits. Some of the brothers who what I'm saying is now based on real life are <laughs> not laughing. They're like <laughs> <laughs> So brothers, please laugh. If you don't laugh, you're exposing yourself. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. I was working in this company where I, I, I was in an office and there was this group of women discussing their men and I laughed until I cried but it was very sad what they were discussing and, and they were just discussing and they were saying what's wrong with our men they cannot even buy underwears and, and one of them was saying that uh, his, it was wrong women should not do that that he, his, man, his man's underwear is actually a piece of string here <laughs> and it is totally detached <laughs> and I was like okay 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 I, I went and told them Vicky Sherry Hambo please Vicky Sherry Hambo please do not wait for Father's Day go and be a blessing praise the Lord I'm telling you this man yeah? it, no it is a continuation of what they used to do when they were boys when, 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 when Fraha and Caleb, you were boys, when you were told to go and wash yourself, what did you wash? Legs, Legs from here, praise the Lord, neck here, and hands here. Everywhere the shirt does not come. <laughs> Especially when my brother used to do that, and my, my, my mom would lift the shirt, and the stomach would be great. <laughs> Interesting. So, so women come. So, so we are one. We are one because she came from me. How can you compete with something that came from you? It is the same thing with if 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 mom you were to compete with Kayla. Are you understanding? Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, in the same concept, the reason the family unit is special to God is because Jesus is hanging on the cross. He is dead, but to check if he is dead. But he was not dead. He had blacked out. He was in, in a deep sleep. Because God now orchestrates what he did with us in the beginning. He comes and they take a spear, pierces their sight. Water comes out and church is born from the ribs of Jesus hanging on the cross. So, so the same revelation of where the woman came from is the same 
concept of where the church came from. She came from me. Ah, come on now. Amen. Just like you as a church, you came from the ribs of Jesus. Amen. So as I have been assigned to love her, to take care of her, so has the Lord taken the assignment to love you and to take care of you. Amen. You are special. Yeah. Help me, fathers. Yeah. Come on, praise the Lord. Yeah. So for the man, he wants to kill men because they're the seed giver. He wants to kill you. You remember when Jesus was being born? There was a, 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 a verdict that was sent out. Okay, stilted and cooked in the, the demonic kingdom. That every boy, two years and below, to be killed. And it's not a new strategy. He used it in the time of Moses. Because Moses was born on the 370th year of the children of Israel being in Egypt. And he knew according to the prophecy Because the, the devil knows scriptures Make sure the devil does not know Scriptures than you Because that's how he's going to deceive you Come on now So he, the devil knew On the 400th year Is the prophecy That God promised, uh, promised Abraham He's going to remove the children of Israel From bondage So he knows he knows how to estimate. He knows God is going to use a man. He's going to use a seed giver. Are you understanding? Yeah. And this man, uh, then it is an approximate that he could be born at around the 60 to the 70th year. So that by the 400th year, he'll be over that year old. Because you are certified as a rabbi at the age of 30. Come on now. That's why Jesus started ministry at age 30. Can you see the calculations? So he sends out a hit against every child to be killed because he knows at any point now, the one who is going to bring deliverance to this nation is going to be born at this hour. But the devil is crafty, but our God is wise, our God is wisdom itself. So he plays the player. Ah, come on now. And he decides, I'm, I'm going to use the, the, from the house where the verdict that has been sent, you will be the ones to educate him. Ah, can you see God? So he sent him there. He somehow manages to maneuver all these attacks and survives. Can you clap to Jesus because you survived? So the men have been in the hit list and he survives in the same place where the attack was coming from. God gets him there. He is, and, and the magic and the miracle of baby Moses is that his basket was swimming upstream. Most of you don't know that. It was swimming upstream. And it was swimming in the Nile, which was full of crocodiles. There were more visions than today's crocodiles. Are you understanding? Yeah. These were all, they were not like the crocodiles you have on TikTok. These, these are like real crocodilos. Are yeah, you getting what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. Yeah. And, and God protected Moses and made sure he is educated with the best system. Put him there, gave him favor. If God can give baby Moses favor, when he has no words to defend himself. How much favor can God give you? Yeah. Now that you know English. <laughs> ah, come on. God will give you favor to survive. And he finds favor. With the same person who has the power. To kill him. And he is taken to the high. He is taught how to fight. Why? Because God is preparing him for the future. Because in God, He's going to use everything you've gone through. Everything you've gone through, God will use it. Even the things you think they don't make sense, He's going to use them. Ah, come on now. He's going to use everything. God is training Him because one day He's going to run an economy of 3 million people strong. He's going to learn how to deal with money, how to lead, 
how to fight because it's going to lead people who do not know how to even go to war. So that's, that's, that's our Moses. Ah, come on now. So if baby Moses could find favor with God, how much favor will he find? But, but I, want you, I don't want you to be ignorant that for the men, the devil wants to kill them. And the men have been under attack. And, 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 and the fact that in, the, in our society now we have competition of the feminism rising and all that. You understand what I'm saying? That becomes now a distraction to the sufferings that men are suffering. Because women are natural, so they're outspoken. They release what they have. That's why men, women are talkative. That's why they, they say what they are feeling. That's why they live longer than men. Women live longer than men with more than 15 years. Sometimes we joke about this. At home, and Carol hates those dark jokes. <laughs> anyway, I can see some of you are not even ready for the dark jokes. <laughs> Let's go to the light ones. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. Are you being blessed? Yes. Who said perhaps? Praise the Lord. All right, brother, it's a joke. Let me tell you something about men. 63% of youths who commit suicide are men. And this was a research which is late. Actually, the current number is 70%. And this was a research based on Africa. It is based on the Americas. And you know, when you hear a number in the U.S., here it's normally worse. Because our system, we have not become very serious. The data companies are focused more on political situations. They are not doing better data to help us understand these things. But let me tell you something. 63% to 70% of suicide are men. Men commit suicide. 71% of high school dropouts are men. Women are currently even more educated than men. 75% of teens in drugs abuse are men. 75%. 75%. If you find a group of young people somewhere drinking and smoking, 75% of them will be men. They're the ones doing hard drugs. And harder and harder. Eighty-five percent of all children with behavioral disorders are men. Eighty-five percent of children, all children with behavioral disorders, where you see small children, they have some disorders. That's why we have a very robust, and we are working on a very. <laughs> Don't scare me like that. What's up? <laughs> you know, okay, this is the joke. Uh, I bought a very big door, and, and, and this door that goes to the Sunday school wing has glasses. Now, my daughter Wanjiro Vero has decided to sit behind the glass and stare at me. <laughs> so I'm here preaching. Then I turn, and I notice the door is closed, but someone is staring at me. <laughs> and she's so tall because she's sitting on a high thing. So I'm like, are we cool? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Let me also say about ladies. Praise the Lord. <laughs> all right, all right, no problem. Do you? Amen? Yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord. That was interesting. If it was at night, I mean, get that you point. <laughs> That's a haunted church. Anyway, it's a joke. It's a joke. Praise the Lord. Don't joke like that. Amen? <laughs> 85% of all children with behavioral disorders. That's why we have a robust Sunday school. And, and we have a curriculum, we are working, we are going to bring a big TV, put it there. They'll be taught with animation, they'll be taught with uh, a, a, illustrations, and we're going to trick them. And then we're going to build a fun park on that corner because we want our children to play. And I want the, the, the Sunday school uh, teachers to make sure that every child is participating in playing. Why? Because we want to improve their social skills to interact. Because when you start seeing a child is avoiding people, it's not a spoken, you're, you're seeing a disaster doing push-ups. So we need to arrest these problems early. 
And I told Carol the vision of having fun packs in churches. Um, uh, we are going to do it very well, even if it costs me half a million. It is worth it. Anything for the kingdom, me and nobody say it's worth it. Yeah. And, I, and then I will show it to so many pastors. I will show them why it's working for us. And after they see it, I would like them to go and duplicate it. Yeah. And, and I want the next time I go to any other church with a Catholic, I want to see children playing because some of our children can only play in the church. Are, are, are you getting? Yeah. There are families. Nowadays, expenses have been going up, but incomes are not going up. So, so you find that families have two jobs each. They have no time for their children. Are you understanding? Yeah. So children have not gotten enough time to be children. And they need to be expressed. We need to see children being laughing. If, if, you, if you see a child who is not laughing, Every every only five hours in Isaiah, I just check, I just smile. That is a problem. Don't be excited. Oh, wow, this is a mature baby. What's wrong with you? <laughs> so we, we we will create an entertainment center. Some of the children who don't have money to to, to watch uh, even a TV to watch something at home. Uh, after the Sunday school, they'll be watching at least for 45 minutes, maybe some Christian movie, Christian animation, cartoon, then they go outside and play. Then we, we, we'll have a plan for them. We'll have a plan for them. We're going to say I'm being told to cover the costs of sex change. Where governments now, nowadays, it's, it's a bit crazy now. It's going to be a bit chaotic. Governments now are introducing policies to take care of that, the third gender, that group that has changed this sex. But this is my belief system. You can change your body organs, but you are what you wear when you were being born. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh -huh. yeah. I'm serious. Mm -hmm. it, when a man changes his body organs and he is made to be a woman, he is still a man, as far as I'm concerned. And that's why he cannot breastfeed, that's why he cannot have a baby. Because he's still a man. Amen? Amen. And that's why sometimes even what I'm saying is supported by their base. <laughs> they don't lose the base. Praise the Lord. Are you understanding? Yes. So it is very sad that majority of men are giving up. Ah, come on now. Let me ask you right now. In Kenya, in the TikTok world, how many women have been acting as men? There's no market. <laughs> now, let's reverse that. How many men are acting as women? So many, right? Yeah. Begin at the camera, but look at video. And as you do, do I post it? Is it safe? Do I post it on Women's Day? What, 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 do, we, what do we do with the high heels? Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So men are under attack, and we have to do something about that. Men are special. The whole Bible, from cover to cover, you will not find anywhere. Anywhere, women are blessing anyone. Because the blessing is with the man. It doesn't matter what you think about men. Maybe you call them, but. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It doesn't matter what you think. Men carry seed. So even the seed of blessing you need a man in your life. You need a man. Praise the Lord. Amen. And the men are under serious attack. You will be shocked how many men call me. How many men we cancel. Who sometimes you see them on Sunday, they are looking so good. But during the week, they are suicidal. If I can present some of them, I go and bring them here. And I say, you can't believe You'll be wondering, this one is suicidal? Why? You won't believe it. 
And by the way, mom, uh, let me also do some mom statistics. The other day we were sharing with uh, just a fellowship when we were driving. And people talk a lot of things, especially when you're doing 180 or 160, 140. <laughs> so, as we were speeding, mom got serious revelations. And I told her we would be trying that speed often. And she told me, I've noticed that the young men in Kenya who have been killing themselves have never heard a Muslim young man on the news. And I told her, actually, almost all of them are Christians because all of them have Christian names. Moses, <laughs> Francis is not, well, praise the Lord. <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? Most of them, most of them are Christians. You see, when their parents come out and give a, a, a speech, they are all talking about God. They even pray, they sing. You, you understand? Yeah. And you're like, what's happening? Because it's not everything that is going to be sorted by Ramashanda, Ramashanda. We need to finish praying and address certain issues. And as a church, we need to touch every issue. Reaching the needs of the total man. That's the Crisco vision. Clap and praise the Lord. And I want something I wanted to say. I want this church, I want you guys to have freedom. That's why I want to put even red carpet here. Because sometimes you do not know what people are going through. And, and mom mentioned that last time when we were on the other side. Said when the anointing is flowing, don't stay behind there looking, you know, being couthed, being, having decorum. No, 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 that will not help you. Because the devil does not also come that way. He does not come with a suit saying, how do I look? Can we have a conversation? Can I beat you? No, no, no. <laughs> you have to run, uh, to, to learn how to run. Mm. Ah, come on now. Yeah. You have to learn how to run. When the anointing is flowing, I want you to have so much freedom. From today, I've allowed you. Even when we are sharing and you feel God ministering to you, you can run to the altar here and you cry to the Lord. Do whatever you want. Ah, come on now. And that's the atmosphere I want us to have. And, um, and we are going to have serious uh, even leadership training and all these things so that even the worship leaders, amen, I don't want you to come here too organized. So that you can, I want, I want you to experience, you know, worship leaders, you give us what you have. You don't come here to help us find breakthrough. You bring us the breakthrough you had already broken on your way here. Come on now, praise the Lord. So I want us to be that kind of a church where people can run and cry to God and experience God. We were, I was taught by Apostle Haridas that a true servant of God one of the things to see about two servants of God is by the time they are done with you, they have brought you closer to God, not themselves. Closer to Christ, not themselves. Amen. As much as I have so many stories that are funny and interesting, I want to tell you about myself, I'm, I'm going to talk about Jesus. Amen. And by the time I'm done, if, if I have achieved my goal in the next few minutes, it's if you can get a breakthrough and experience God like never before. If, if I don't see you having that, then you make me useless. Tell your neighbor, don't make the pastor useless. <laughs> All right, praise the Lord. So I'm going to read two stories, and I hope I can get two people to ask something. So that hopefully, I won't go to the details of the act or because of time, or I may not need to do this, because the background work took a bit of time in the book of john chapter 4 we find a story here and then we're gonna look at another story and these stories have similarities that are hidden praise the lord Amen. so i can have maybe olivia and uh and uh Aven and, oh, then uh let me let me, let me have elvina Okay, let me have you. Come here. Come here. Yes, yes. I wanted a, a tall lady like him. Amen. So, don't 
There was no instructions to come closer to each other. But <laughs> you can do you. <laughs> Alright, all right. Where? Where? <laughs> you know, in another country, you will be married by doing that. Alright, okay. Switch, switch. Uh, come, come to this side, let him stay to this side. So, this is the prodigal son. And you are the Samaritan woman. Sit here. Just, just sit there. Sit, find a way to sit somewhere. Uh, tattoo, no, nothing fancy. Don't, don't get a big chair and come there to ribbons. Just sit there. <laughs> Alright. So there's two stories here that are kind of similar. And I hope by the time I, 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 we look at both of them, you will be ready to enter a, a new realm with God. Amen. Uh, let me read, uh, uh, there's a story here uh, in the book of John chapter 4. Jesus talks with a Samaritan woman. Now Jesus, and I want to share certain things very quickly with you, okay? Mm -hmm. Are you listening? Let, let me read for you. Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. Slander ilianza mapema sana. Ilikuatuni maslanda ya Pharisees. Amen? <laughs> the, the, land of Paris, the Pharisees learned that, that, that he was gaining and baptiz, baptizing more disciples than John. That was not true. Amen? Amen. Although in fact that it was not Jesus who baptized but his disciples. So he left Judea and went once more to Galilee. From verse 4 is very interesting. Now he had to go to Samaria. Another version says he needed. Come on now. To go to Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Saicha. Near the plot ground of Jacob. Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Joseph's well was there. And Jesus tired. As he was from the journey. Sat down to the well. It was about noon. So it was about noon. But he's going to sit here now at the well. Are you, are you understanding? I want you to understand the background story of this story. Jesus needed to go to Samaria. It was not an impromptu thingy. It was something that he had wired. Come on now. Uh, who is agreeing with me? Yes. Just looking at me. Praise the Lord. Amen. As if I'm doing a presentation. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Are you listening? Yes. I don't want you to miss anything. Say a woman means. It was a plan. In, in the in his diary that day, he had planned to go to Samaria. And, 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 and the kind of a mission he was to do was kind of sensitive. So this is the background story. This is what he does. He calls the disciples and he sends them to go get food. And he sends them far. And, 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 and they do not ask themselves an obvious question. Why would 12 men go for food? Because the kind of a ministry he's going to do is kind of sensitive. And he does not need judgmental people around this thing. Mm -hmm. oh, come on now. So the Samaritan, uh, when a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, and I want you to notice, because before you experience that in God the Father, yeah. the first thing that will bring you, the vehicle, that will bring viscosity to your flow to him is going to be number one understanding his love for you and before i go any further i want to tell you that jesus is crazy about you yeah, come on. i'm preaching better than you appreciate it come on Jesus is crazy about you. He loves you. And you have to know this. You have to believe this. Then you experience this. You have to know this. You have to believe this. Then you experience it. Because it's one thing to hear that God loves you. And it's another to experience it. Especially for a generation like ours that has come from a fatherless background. Believing that God loves us is a uphill task. 
Because you see, the ugly fathers that we have are supposed to depict a picture of who God is. But what do you do when the father that you, anyone with a spectacles or shades, anything, anything, I'm gonna, I will return it. <laughs> anyone you got a chance to call father, daddy, whether in the church or outside the church, at school, in the churches, anywhere you met any father, anywhere, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. This shades represent the fathers you have interacted with. So when you come to Jesus, because Jesus does not hurry you into the Holy of Holies. It's a journey. And it takes us step by step. The first vehicle, the reason we need to take care of the family unit, the reason we need to protect the family unit, we need to invest on men and families because through the picture of the family setup, we see the picture of the church. And through the picture of fathers, we see God the Father. So, so, what do you do when you have a damaged perspective? Because if your father, this is this is how you see your father. So if your father was never there, kind of like, right? All right, focus, amen. Caro, focus, amen. Amen. Are, are you understanding? So 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 if your lenses, how you see God, if the fathers that you interacted with betrayed you, then that is how you're gonna see God. If, if your early fathers, you went to them to help you. Others were fathers who told you they will pay your school fees. And every time they said, I don't have. This is how you will see God. No wonder you will pray one night and 50 times. Because something in your medulla oblongata, and those are not tongues, is going to tell you he cannot hear you. Because you are seeing the Lord the Father through the lenses of your own dad. And because your dad told you, I do not have any money, then when you approach God, you always reduce your prayer request. But I'm here to tell you that if he comes here and he is on this corner, pray, God, give me a shoe. And I'm on this corner, say, God, give me a jet. None of us is surprising God. us a surprising God. The same God who can give you a shoe can give you a jet. But he says, let it be to you according to your faith. According to what faith has done to you. Ah, come on now. We need mental deliverance. And this is what this word is going to do to you. Praise the Lord. If the lenses of the fathers and the guardians in your life gave up and ran away, you will always lose confidence. Sometimes you'll go to prayer and you're there praying and I'm in the spirit and you're praying and all of a sudden you forget your praying. You start doing things and, and, and three hours later you are like, by the way, I was praying. How can I give up on prayer? Because that's how you give up on the fathers in your life. You would start having a conversation and, and, and your head will go like, anyway, what's your name? There's no point. So you go to God and say, Father, Father. The more you say, Father, the more the history is awoken in your head. And you're like, he can't do it. I know he can't do it. So if you have a father who kept saying, I can't, I can't. You're going to approach God with the belief that he can't also. But I'm here to tell you that the devil is a liar. Even if he wanted to do a play. Called the truth, it would end up being a lie. Because the devil is a lie. He can't, he has no ability to give any truth. So what he does, he does psychology. Plays with your head. Let me tell you, Kayla, the way I've raised Kayla, she will have an upper hand than a head. Because I've not taught her that I'm not able. I have not taught her that I cannot provide. Ah, come on. Yeah. So her confidence when she goes to pray, even right now she prays things and I look at her, I'm like, oh. well, you know what I'm saying? She, she believes it's possible. She believes everything is possible. 
Because that's my responsibility as a father to show her the right lenses to see God. And that's why when she asks me for anything, I sit her down, we hold hands and tell her, let's pray. Even when I know I can fix it within seconds. Even when I know I have money in my pocket. Sometimes uh, there's a time Carol was like, uh, oh, why you keep praying? I don't have, no, I'm conditioning her to know that even me, I go to God. So that one day, when she's in a place, she can say, God of my father. Handle this. Come on, praise the Lord. So, the fathers. There's so many people here with father stories. Some fathers are too strict. So they see God as a, as a very mean master, Chinese master. With a very long rod. Put your legs where you are. Then you're there. I, I don't get what I'm saying. So the picture they have of God is that God is a narcissist. God is a control freak. God does not want me happy. If I have to be happy, it's going to be like the, 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 the royal family happy. Like <laughs> That's all. So some people, some Christians are uptight. They're not attractive to the gospel. Ah, come on now. Because the fathers they grew up with, so the picture they have of God is that God is, uh, is behind the clouds with the, with the, and it's not like Cupid arrows, they're like fire arrows. So, so when somebody gets it, and others, the fathers were too strict and they were born again. So now that cemented how Father God is. And, and that's why such, such kids struggle with guilt. Even God is telling them, what are you talking about? I, I forgive you and for God. That's why they keep repenting the whole year. Lord, remember what I did? I'm so sorry. Because they do not have a forgiving father at home. So they don't see God as a forgiving God. Because they see they have a father who is petty. They think God is also petty. Others, they have a, a father who drives them to work heavily. So they do not understand the concept of favor against the labor. So, these lenses need to be changed and we need to see God as he is because if we see him as he is we will see ourselves as we are this needs to be changed we need and the only way this can be changed my dear brother my sister is if you can have an experience with God that's what changed my life I don't have time to tell you my background stories yada 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 just believe me when I tell you that if you begin to experience God, when you walk with him, you get deeper and deeper. And today is one of those days he wants to baptize you with his love, with his goodness, break off every chain, remove every weight so that you can run. Let me tell you, if I, if, I, if I call Kayla right now and I find that she's carrying Napier grass on her back. She's carrying some luggages and some ungas from the portion meal. The first, uh, do you think I'll be happy? I'll be pissed to the off. I will ask, let him present himself. Who has done this to you? I know you could be there saying, but it's good to teach children to carry, uh, to serve, to work. No, 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 no. This is not that. Why will I be angry, not only with Kayla, but I'll also be on the hunt of who did that to her? Because I want my baby light. I want her happy. I want her excited to live this life, to be the best she can be. 
because she's a she is a representation of who he is. So, so if she is depressed, it's a picture of what we are dealing with. So I need her free. I need her happy. I need her successful. And I don't want her to carry unnecessary junk in her life. Are you understanding? If you get that, then you get this. God wants you free. He wants you to let go of the baggages. He's wondering who has made you carry the weight you're carrying. Hey, come on now. Are, are you getting so, so, so Jesus is very loving. Jesus is very kind. He takes us from a journey. And we're going to read these two stories at the same time. And, uh, and, and let's jump. I'll, I'll go to and fro. Uh, Luke chapter 15 verse 11. Jesus continued. There was a man who had two sons. How many? Uh, how many? Two. He had two sons. The other one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. He, pro he, he divided the property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had. He was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what my father never did. I'm going to go where my father never went. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live better and prove him wrong. So he set off for a distant country. And there he squandered, squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country. The thing about severe famine is that famine will always come to everybody. To the prayerful one and to the non-prayerful one. It is this, the similarity of this line is the same one with the wise and the foolish builder. Doesn't matter who you are, whether the wise or the foolish one, the, the shaking, the earthquake, the storm will hit both houses. Are you getting? Yes. So, so, so it is who you have become that will be proven by the shaking. So to the prepared person, the shaking is an opportunity for wealth transfer, for an establishment. You see, when there is a farming, it is an opportunity for them who had prepared themselves in the days of Abadans to take over. Mm. Even here in Kenya, when there is a farming, a lot of millionaires come up. Because they just go with a lorry and buy cows, like uh, less than 100 kilometers from here. They buy cows even 2,000 each. Come, put them on a zero grazing area. I gave somebody an idea, this idea 15 years ago, and it worked for him. So I know what I'm saying. So they, they feed the cows, and after two months, the machinated cows are back, and they sell them 50,000, 30,000 each. Let's assume you didn't buy many, they were just 1,000 cows. <laughs> so the farming becomes an opportunity to the prepared person. But to the one who wasted resources, wasted time, wasted servants of God, come on now, Wasted this time to listen and maximize the anointing in this hour. It's going to be a challenge. So the famine hit the whole country and it began to be in need. So, hmm, it's very interesting. Because for the Samaritan woman, she will experience God through revelation. Say, I want to be like the Samaritan woman. But the prodigal son. He will experience the Father through pain. Are you understanding? The drive to knowing who God is, for him is going to take pain, the prodigal son, for the Samaritan woman is going to take a revelation. Like I told you, God always comes with a briefcase and says, we can either do this the easy way or the hard way. Ah, come on now. For me, I prefer learning by Epiphany by revelation. So not after that, the, amen. amen. So he went to and hired himself. Now he's, he's, he's in a series of <laughs> crazy. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country. Now he's alone. He's alone. He's alone. Now he's alone. 
Amen. Amen. So he went and had himself to out to a citizen of that country who sent him out to the fields to feed the pigs. Now he's gonna feed the pigs. He's gonna feed pigs. I want you to realize this is the story of a Hebrew family. They don't associate with pigs, but he's gonna feed that which he's not supposed to be part of. Amen. Amen. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating. He was envious to the pigs. Look how low he has fallen. But no one gave him anything. Praise the Lord. Amen. No one gave him? Alright. No one gave him anything. No one gave him anything. Let's go to the Samaritan woman. When the Samaritan woman who came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciple had gone to the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew. I, I want you to notice two things. For the woman... Like I told you, the first thing, the, 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 the oil that is going to cause you to skip to God, to get an experience with God, is going to, number one, understanding and knowing and believing so that we experience the love of God. And I want you to see the love of God in the hidden areas of this picture. Jesus has sent out 12 men to buy lunch. And by the way, he is not interested with the 12 who are bringing food he's not interested with food because later in that chapter i won't read it right now when they come back and they say here is the food jesus says i have food you know not of which is proof that he was not even interested with food he was getting rid of the religious stage of life that they were in that could have interfered with the deliverance of his daughter So Jesus goes there, and this is what Jesus goes, go there, go there, you know, you, you can sit down for a minute. So Jesus goes there and, and sits and waits. I want you to see the love of God in this picture. That he waited for you. That he sits down and waits for you. I don't know if you can get it. He sits down and waits for you. It's one thing to wait for Kayla outside the school because I'm excited because she's coming from a good place. But you need to know love if somebody is waiting for you like Jesus is waiting for you. And he is a prophet. Jesus is a prophet. He can see where the woman is. He can see he is dropping it like it's hot. It's not like he was in the intercessor meeting or a choir meeting. He was fornicating. But even though she was there hurting God, God still sat down, created the atmosphere, got rid of the people who would have been barriers to her breakthrough and just waited. And I'm telling you, this is somebody who used to teach a meeting of 30,000. 30,000, it is the capacity of your stadium in full is 35,000. That was the kind of a group that Jesus used to minister to. Are you understanding? But he would ignore that kind of a crowd and come to you. And you're not doing anything nice. And he waits for you. Is that way? I want you to see his love in hidden details that he can wait for you. You remember the day you got born again? And if you're not born again, you remember you will be born again today? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The day you, you were born again, the Lord orchestrated everything to save you. Some of you, you were on the, the way to the market. Then there was a crusade. It was a setup that you may hear God. When, he was, when they were organizing that crusade three weeks before, you were sinning. But he was waiting for you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come, somebody clap to Jesus. No one gave him anything. We are back to the prodigal son. You can stand for a minute. 
So when he came to his senses, when he came to his senses, why is this important? Now I'm going to teach you how to arrive to an experience with God. I'm going to tell you the first step. So he came to his senses. Because before revival, there must be repentance. And there will be no repentance without conviction. There will be no conviction without you coming back to thinking right. Because as a man thinketh, so is he. If you don't think right, you can't do right. So he came to his senses. Before, he was not operating in his senses. He was operating in the senses of his generation. The senses of his, of his pride. The senses of the devil. The senses of the enemies of his destiny. The senses of his associates. But this time, he came to his senses. And he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And I'm here starving to death. Hmm. I will set out, go back to my father and say to him, Now, repentance has begun. Out of thinking right, oh, come on now. now, we can see the steps of his breakthrough. Where did he start? Where did he start? I can see most of you are from group of schools. People from group of schools are scared of being wrong. For us from community schools, we would shout anything to the teacher. And the teacher would tell you, Anderson, that was last, last, yesterday's question. <laughs> you are answering it today. <laughs> you are very it. Anyway, well, we did not get that joke. <laughs> Where did the deliverance start? You missed it. It started him being, come on here, hold him, hold him, hold him, hold him. It started from pain. Because pain broke him with the wrong association. Pain sometimes is a good thing. Because it means sometimes you find yourself alone in a dark place with pigs. Amen. Then from there, because you cannot come to your senses. When you're operating with people with their wrong senses. So sometimes God has to tell Abraham, break off with the Lord. This level of revelation. The level of a new revelation about me requires you walk solo. Ah, oh, come on now. If you really walk with God, God does not walk with crowds. There will be a time where he will tell you, come closer. There's a time Jesus broke from the church and he was working only with 12. But sometimes he would seclude himself from the 12 and he would go with the 3. And sometimes he would even drop the 3 and be alone. Because mm -hmm. a certain deeper realms, deep calls to the deep. Yeah, yeah. And you cannot go with a crowd. Because your calling is not a crowd calling. Yeah. Yeah. So he... So he, he first of all separates, and some of you, he will separate you with the wrong associates, mm -hmm. even by orchestrating them to attack you, so that he gets rid of them. Because where you're going in this new level, it is not a crowd level. It is not a crowd level. It is not a crowd level. Because he does not want the crowd to take the glory. Mm -hmm. He wants somebody who he can trust with the glory. Because what he's going to do to you, it will be so amazing. That if you have the wrong people, they will steal the glory. But if he walks with you a bit deeper secretly, you will know and know that God did this. And you'll come back to the public to say, no, I didn't do this. The Lord did this. Yes. Ah, come on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And out of that, men will come to know your God. Ah, come on now. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So, so he separates and the man is here and he comes to his senses. His uh, thinking right brings him to, 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 to right action. So, 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 so he thinks right, prays right, then a, a right action. Okay? So, so this is something very interesting here. 
he says to himself, I will go, come on now, praise the Lord. I, want you, I don't want you to miss these details. They are very interesting. Okay? I will set out and go to my father and say to him, say to who? Okay. Can you repeat after me? Uh, repeat after me. Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So uh, uh, now, after he rehearsed this, the Bible says, so he got up and went to his father. Now, this is the other thing about what I was telling you, the similarity of these two people. A Samaritan is to the women. The prodigal son is to the man. But when he was still a long way off, his father saw him and he was filled with compassion for him. And he ran to his son and threw his arms around him and kissed him. Now, listen. When he was still a long way off, the father was still waiting for him. Just like a Samaritan, he's still waiting for him. And, and, and this waiting, he had rehearsed. He had rehearsed so many times his walking style. I believe sometimes he would see somebody and he thinks he's his son. Then he turns out not to be his son. And it is an oxymoron because on one side he says he was lost. He is found. He was dead. He is found. What was he doing looking for a dead man? Because it's the father. It's the life giver. He knows you without him. You are dead. You are dead. Doesn't matter how much he bones. Doesn't matter how big you think you is. You are dead without him. He is the source. He is the life. He is the way, truth and the life. So he's there watching. And he sees his son. Oh God. Now, two things about the love of God. He did not just wait for you. He ran towards you. Are you understanding? Uh, when you go outside of the prodigal son, you are the prodigal son. I want you to look at him. Now we have a big charge, we can play him. No, 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 no shortcuts. Uh, <laughs> group of schools. Go there. You're, 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 oh, this, uh, praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So his father, he was there watching. Can you come this way? He's coming, rehearsing. I will say to my father, I've seen before you, and I can I will say to my father, and his father ran. Like, oh my God. <laughs> He ran towards you. Thank God for a big church. Clap and praise the Lord. If it was the other church, I could have gone as far as here. I think I would have thrown my shoe. It would have gone on behalf of me. He ran. Why? The Holy Spirit told me just to dramatize that. I'm not just playing games. Amen. It's not like that he. It's Father's Day, I've not been running to car. No, no. <laughs> the Lord told me to dramatize that, to show you, to create a picture in your head that He ran to you. Now, let me tell you this. He did not let you say anything. Before you said the sinner's prayer, He ran. Before, before you fasted, He ran. You walk with God as if it's all about your sacrifices, all about your fasting, all about your prayers. No, He read before you knew how to pray, before you knew the other names of Elohim, Elohim. Are you understanding? He read towards you. He loves you. Stop moving into works. Because there's a lot of people who are in the church who have not experienced. God in the Father, the dad in, in the Father God, because they have turned their work with God. They have turned it into works. Mm. Praise the Lord. Amen. He waited for you. Then he ran towards you. Before you, you said anything, he kissed you, hugged you, and walked with you back home. He walked with you back home. God loves you. He had not said the sinner's prayer. Come on now. He ran to you before you said the sinner's prayer. 
I'm telling you, God is so crazy about you that you know. And if today you experience the love of God, there is nothing as powerful as if you understand the love of God. You understand the love of God and we hold our hands and pray. We can shake this nation. Because I'm telling you, these are people. You think Kayla doubts my love for her and what I can do for her? The other day she was threatening some children. One, 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 there's a kid who has a crush on Zara. So, and you know when, when boys have a crush on girls, they sometimes even beat them, so... <laughs> because they don't know how to manifest. So, during a lot of hugs and whatever, and forceful kisses, they scratch that. Kayla went there and was like, you know, dad has a gun. He's gonna shoot you dead. <laughs> then they are big dogs. He's gonna set them to your cops. Yeah, yeah, you get it. <laughs> anyway, I'm telling you, Kayla really, in her own words, the right and the right man. And, and by the way, Kayla was not blinking. Because she knows they don't doubt my love for them. Now, because they don't doubt my love for them, they normally ask me for anything. There was one time we were going to a business meeting and I decided to go with them. And even Carol was there. And Kayla was like, Did you love that building? Will you buy it for us? And I told her, Yeah, as a, as a matter of fact, we're going to buy it. It was West, West End Towers. So I told them, Let's hold our hands and pray God to give me this building. Why that confidence? It is coming from knowing the love I have for her. Because out of that love, I know I can do anything. Are you understanding? So if you would understand how much God loves you, you can take up projects like this one, where we built and we spent, we have, we have burnt like 6 million, almost, 5 point something. And we are a 2 year old church. Now you don't have money, but our God is big. Yes. So I told Carol, let's, what do we have? We have a car. We sold our car and we started by faith. Why? He can do it. And before we finish, we're already discussing how do we design the <laughs> spring start. Ah, come on now. <laughs> Let me tell you, it is time for God to be revealed to the world. And by the way, evangelism is not supposed to be a struggle. It's just like Kayla can introduce me to his children, to his friends in school saying, this is my dad, he's amazing, he does, he does, he does. That's evangelism. It is you now presenting to the world what God has been to you, what God has done for you, what God is capable of doing. Come on, next time you go back to your apartment, look at it again and say, I can buy this thing. There's a name I had not even paid rent uh, when we used to rent. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I saw the, the landlord texting me. He lives in the US. And I told him, I would like you to sell me this apartment. Then we, we organize how you can sell me the block. And it was a long conversation because of the mutual. I said, as you see, as you see. And by the way, I didn't even have money for rent for that man. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. Are you understanding? Yeah. And we got to a different type of a relationship where we really had a different conversation. But actually, during COVID, I was the only tenant who was reduced the rent. Oh, wow. The others were paying in full. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yeah. What I'm saying is begin to change your mindset and align it with your God. Just don't go back to that apartment thinking, oh, we live in a small place, we are small people, we come from a small nation. We, no, no, no. So we're going to own this. How can we buy this? How much can it be? Ah, come on now. Because if God loves you so much, there's another scripture that will mess up with you if you give it attention. Do you want me to give it to you? Yes. If God gave us Jesus, what else can he give us? Are you understanding? If, if, if you come to my house, praise the Lord, and, 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 and we, we give you food, we give you, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, we, 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 we let you even stay there for a few days when we are not around. 
Would you start shaking to ask us, can I cook one sausage? Because if we give you something that is more valuable, what about these little, little things? So if God gave us Jesus, what are these other small, small things? Clap and praise the Lord. <laughs> Let me show you something very interesting. Verse 21, the son said to his father, remember you recited with me what he said. Yeah. So I don't expect you to forget. Unless, unless, unless now we are dealing with a situation. The son said to his father, he could be wrong, he couldn't shut up, he has repeated it too long, too many times, it's enough. I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. What was the next thing he was to say? Come on, what was the next thing? The father did not let him finish. He did not let him say those words. He did not let him devalue himself before his own creator. So the father interrupted him when he was talking and did not even address him. He addressed the servants. He was like angels. Come on now. The son said to his father, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servant, ignored him. Because, you see, repentance is not in what you say, it is in what you do. So to the father, coming back home was enough repentance. Coming to church was enough. It's just, just a sign I'm interested with you, Lord. That was enough for him. So the whole story, the prayer, what the father is saying, this prayer you are giving me is not for me, it's for you. As far as I'm concerned, I hugged you, I kissed you, and uh, by the way, servants, this is what he tells the servant. He says to the servant, quick! <laughs> it's going to be quick. God is going to do a quick thing in your life. Amen. You guys, you're clapping without revelation. We build this church, everything, in six weeks. So there is a, an anointing in our lives, me and Carol, of acceleration. So when I tell you God is going to do something, quick! You better take it, just believe it. It is easier to believe, you use less muscles to believe than not to believe. He said to his father, uh, but the father said, quick, bring the best robe, put it on him, put a ring on his finger, status. Meaning, I won't address what you're about to say because I know every word before you even say it. I'm, I'm going to do things to show you you're different with the servants. You're different with the slaves. Amen. I'm going to put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. Hmm. Within a very short time, between him sharing food with the pigs and him dressed in loyalty and dancing was repentance. Was the ability to say, I'm sorry. Do you understand? Because there will be no revival without repentance. There will be no repentance without conviction. There will be no conviction without you being broken from the wrong associations. Okay. Are you understanding? Yes. So, so uh, now this is an interesting one. L let me, your brother has come, he replied, and the father killed the, uh, you know, uh, so he called one of his servants and asked him, what is going on? This is the, the older son. Your brother has come and he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf. Because he is back safe and sound, the older brother became angry and refused to go in. So, so now we have a picture of two types of Christians. One is a Christian who believes in experiencing the love of God based by works. Based by works. And this is the older brother. He says he's not going to go in. So his father went out. Now you can see now his 
the love of the Father again. He goes out to where he is. Praise the Lord. And he pleaded with him. So there's a conversation. I'm going to tell you. 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 You know that there's a confusion there. But he answered to his father. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered to his father. Look, all these years I've been slaving for you. You can see how he's thinking. He is seeing himself as a slave before the Lord. He is seeing himself as a slave. All these years I've been slaving for you. All these years I've been slaving for you. He does not even think like he has done anything. For you and never disobeyed your orders. So something told him what was important was following every order to the latter and what? Yet you have never given me a young goat, even a young goat. So I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, he's not even my brother, it is a son of yours. You can see the attitude. This son of yours, huh? who has squandered the property with prostitutes. Again, another similarity with the Samaritan woman. Comes home, you kill the fat and calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and found. Now, this is the, the interesting thing. It's very intriguing that the Bible, Jesus ends the story there. You see, Jesus had the power to continue the stories, but he chose to end it there. So we will never know what came out of the older son. Praise the Lord. Because for him, he believes in works to bring him closer to God. Like some people believe if I pray a lot, if I fast a lot, I'm going to experience God. No! All those things have their place. But the first thing you need to understand is that he loves you. Because, let me tell you, when you understand this love, you are going to behave differently with when you don't understand this love. Because working, you're going to run out of energy. Sooner or later, you're going to run out of pretense. But when, this is the difference between when you operate by works. When you operate by works, you go to God with confidence based on what you have done recently. So, so you go to God with a sense of entitlement. Lord, I've come from a mission. I've been preaching. I've been leading prayers for the last one week. I've been using my debt appendix. So you owe me a big deal of a blessing. Actually, when God does certain things, you would have preferred he does for you. For example, Bridget from nowhere gets married. You go like, please, Lord. Bridget has never showed up in prayer meetings. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ah, come on now. Anyone real in the meeting? Why? Because you're operating by works. You're like, Lord, you didn't give me the more Kenya to tell me the secret is Sunday school. Praise the Lord. No, it's not Sunday school. Yeah. <laughs> For the visitors, Bridget was our Sunday school teacher. She did a wedding two weeks ago. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you understanding? Why? Because it works. But let me tell you, what love does when you understand the love of God. You go, you don't go with the attitude of entitlement. You, you go to God with the attitude of gratefulness. Mm. And confidence. Because mm. love brings confidence. That's why mom is seated with confidence. Because she knows, hmm, I have a mind. He loves me. I know it. I praise the Lord. She's not there worried which girl is looking at the, my partner, you know. I did, what? What? No, no, she's, she does not come to church with her German shepherds. Because love brings confidence. Oh, come on now. So, so when you go to pray, you're praying with confidence. You're not praying with entitlement. You're not even bringing up what you've been doing because you've been doing them out of love. Oh, come on. 
in a conversation with friends, people who keep bringing up what they have done for you or done for the church, done for the organization, they don't love it. They normally, it is a sign that there is an ulterior motive. It is a, a transaction. They have been giving you this because there is a secret card they are hiding. And sooner or later they are going to smack it on the floor. And you will know why they have been so dedicated. It is just what we do. What do we, people in Kenya do? When you know you are about to do a wedding, you start saying hi to everyone. Hello. It's been long. We need to catch up, girl. We need to have some tea. And I'm like, so, so sometimes, because God has given me heightened discernment. If you knew about our level of discernment and, and word of knowledge, it would freak you out. I'm serious. But we normally have fun, me and my wife. There's, there's certain things we can tell people, you know. So sometimes you see, sometimes somebody just says hi. I tell my wife, they are about to mind. You understand? Know I was like, just hi. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. And let me tell you, two weeks, three months, they're like, ah, do you have Do you? Sometimes there's even a young man the other day called me, telling me the Lord has given me a word for you. Even for you and your church, do not despise the days of humble beginning. It was a loud speaker. And God went like, he's late with two years. <laughs> because two years ago is when we needed that word of humble beginning. <laughs> but then I went like, I know what he needs. He'll be coming in the next few weeks. So I, I muted. Uh, I know there's something he needs. So after the call, later is when I was told, uh, hook me up, somebody, this person needs a job, my sweetheart. I'm like, ah, no wonder. <laughs> 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 then I Welcome to Kenya. Praise the Lord. Are you being blessed? Are you understanding? When you understand, let, let me show you something very interesting here. Uh, this is important before we pray. Uh, let's go back to the woman. Okay, okay. Let me show you something beautiful, okay? You're going to enjoy this. Tell anybody you will enjoy this. Yes. All right, all right. Jesus said to her, so the Samaritan woman said to him, uh, let's go back to seven. When the Samaritan woman came to draw water, come, come here, Samaritan woman. She, she came to draw water, praise the Lord. When she came to draw water, she found Jesus there. And uh, I want you to observe how this story goes. Praise the Lord. When the Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? And this is what uh, uh, and the Bible clarifies that the disciples were not around. Because this kind of a conversation could not happen if the disciples were there. Because they had not graduated to the level where Jesus was to see things the way Jesus sees them. There are certain types of ministries that require a certain level of growth and maturity. And for this one, because Samaritans had no association with the Jews, come on now, and this woman was popularly known as the lady who dropped it like it's hot, because it was hot. Amen? Praise the Lord. So this Samaritan woman, <laughs> not you darling, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I wouldn't say what I want to say. Now, Jesus says, will you give me a drink? And this is what the Samaritan woman says. You are a Jew. I am a Samaritan woman. How do you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate themselves with the Samaritans. Now, the first thing he calls Jesus is what? You are a Jew. No, no, the, 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 so Jesus is a Jew. But Jesus does not give up because he is having a conversation with him. Because Jesus does not rush us to the Holy of Holies. He, it's a journey. He walks us. To them. He does not rush us to an experience with him. He walks us to there based on our interests. Based on our interest. I want to show you something. Before repentance, repentance brings you what? Revival. It gives you the experience. Okay? But you are not going to repent if your perception is not addressed. Let me show you something. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God, who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman says, sir, 
I want you to notice there's a graduation of how he's addressing Jesus based on the revelations that he's getting who Jesus is. So Jesus is now out of the category of Jews. He's now Sir. So the woman goes like Sir. The woman said you have nothing to, to, to draw water from this well and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself as did also his sons and his livestock? Now he has brought in a subject, somebody very special, somebody called Jacob. Are you greater than our father Jacob? Because this is what we do. We have to, uh, whenever we are faced with such a situation, a Jesus situation, we, 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 we bring him and, and, and join him with uh, a presentation of, of the other idols that we have seen. And it is now for him to defend himself who he is, if he is greater. Are you understanding? So, 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 so when Jesus comes out, we will take him and put him between our idols. What we know. So we use what we know to understand what we don't know. So we're going to put Jesus there next to Jacob. Come on now. So that we can do comparison. And if you're greater, then we're going to settle with the greater one. Are, are you understanding? That's what the religious mindset is doing now. So are you greater than Jacob? I know you didn't get that. I will teach it soon. I know you didn't get it. Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us this well and drank from it himself? So, 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 so we're going to bring you to uh, you who is invisible. This revelation which is invisible, we're going to bring it and merge it with what is visible, which we understand, that which we can relate to. And from what we can relate to, if you can beat it, then I can understand you. I know you're still not getting it, but this is what, what we do with God. So, so your, your work with God is going to compete with your fathers. So you will be born again. But your confidence in God is not going to be greater than your biological father until God can do something greater than your dad did. So you put God in an exam room. Yes, I love him. Yes, I worship him. But you have the duty to prove that you're better than my earthly father. So, so the reason he's talking about his father Jacob, is it, it shows us that this woman has been fatherless. He's not talking about his own father. So he's going to talk about the fathers in town. No wonder he has serious situations with men, which is a common, common psychological situation with women who are fatherless. They easily turn to promiscuity, to a lot of perversion, and they don't do perversion because they love it. They do it because they feel because my father gave up on me. My father walked out on me. My father died on me. Then I'm not worthy. So, so I'm going to... Or, or maybe something was wrong with me. The reason they had fights with, the, with my mother is because I had issues. It's because I was the problem. Maybe my dad did not like me. That's why he beat my, father, my mother. Are, are you getting something? Praise the Lord. So these children begin to question themselves and they get to the age of getting everybody to like them. So in that journey of getting everybody to like them, they become extremely generous. Even with their body. That's why 80% of women who are extremely perverse and immoral, they have father issues. Amen. Amen. So he says, are you greater? I know still you didn't get that, but don't worry, we're going to visit it in the next few weeks. So the woman said, give me this water so that, uh, uh, huh, 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 huh. so Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. So Jesus records that you have a thirst that I can address. You have a thirst that five men cannot satisfy. You have a thirst only me I can address. And, and, and this is the funny thing. The story does not start with Jesus giving her water. <laughs> anyway, let's go. You, if you take this water, you'll never be thirsty again. But whoever drinks, if, if, if you take the water you're about to fetch, you will be thirsty again. That's what he meant. But, if, if, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never be thirsty. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Are you ready for this? The water I give them will be 
will become to them a spring, Christmas springs. It will be a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to her, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to come, to keep coming here to draw water. Now that is sarcasm. And, 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 and the sarcasm lets Jesus know she didn't get it. Now, you see, Jesus has brought her, I want you to see this journey of the conversation. Jesus has brought her literally where he wanted her to be. And, and Jesus has marketed this water and it's like, the water that I give you, ah, come on now. The water I give you, you will never be there again. Actually, it is going to make you have a well from the inside and that well will be bubbling. It, you will be able to access it and because you have well springing out clean water flowing from the within ah, come on now because you are a natural then everything that you flow to you will be, because you'll be carrying my spirit and i'm the life the truth ah, come on now and then everything you'll be giving life to everything you come to contact with then after he has marketed this water this woman says okay sold i am sold give me this water now when you read this story as a new Christian, you may think the next thing would have been Jesus to carry, to give him a cup of some water or something. He says something that is, somehow looks like it's out of the picture, but it is not. Let me show you what Jesus said. The woman said, give me this water. Jesus told her, go call your husband and come back. And I believe the woman was like, what does the husband have to do with water? You understand what I'm saying? But I'll tell you where, where it has to do with water. Because Jesus now. <laughs> are you ready? Yeah. Now you're telling God, I am sold. I want to experience your love. I want to know your love. I want to know who you are. I want to experience the glory of your majestic love. I want to be in it and with it. I don't want to live like that. Just like this woman. Is that what you're praying? Ah, come on now. Is that what you're praying? Yes. Timothy is looking at the wife, he's like, oh, it's a yes. Oh, yeah, yes, even me, yes. You know? <laughs> is that what you're praying for? Yes. Now, Jesus goes like, before you experience me, before you experience me, you have to address repentance. So, so it's like, there's no problem. The water is available, but you cannot get to it without repentance. So he's going to ask a provocative question that will turn your attention, your senses, to your situation, which is a barrier and a block. Come on now. Yeah. So, so now, Jesus is now getting ready to address curtains. Can you say curtains? Curtains, curtains that are holding people from experiencing the love of God. And I want you to give, bring me a kitamba. Uh, the prodigal son, Kayapa. Amen. So there's several curtains that Jesus is going to get rid of. Can we, can we be quicker? Amen. Amen. Clap to Jesus if you love it. <laughs> All right. Quickly, quickly. No, no, no. Don't think quickly. Just, just come. Think, on, uh, think here. Don't you worry. However it looks like, people bear with us. Come here, come here. Create a curtain, the two of you. You are the post to the door. Amen. Create a curtain. So... Amen. Uh, no problem, no problem. Uh, what are you doing? Okay, okay. Yeah, chidi, yeah, chidi. Just, just come here. It's, it's a uh, Caribbean, Caribbean. It's a door, it's a door. So the lady could jump in your picture. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, are you seeing this? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so Jesus is like, if you drink of this water. Praise the Lord. You will never last again. And the woman says what? Give me the water. Thank you. The woman says what? I'm sold. So Jesus says, go bring your husband. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, 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 and the woman says, I have no husband. And Jesus decides to address that story and says, you are very right. It is true what you have said. At least for this one, you are true. You have no husband. Even the one you are with is not yours and you have had five. 
Now, do you know what, what she says? Praise the Lord. What is Jesus addressing? Sin. Because you want to experience me? Now we're going to get rid of the first curtain. The first curtain that is blocking you from experiencing the love of God. It is the curtain of sin. And the Bible says, this is what the woman says. Do you want to hear what the woman says? Yes. Do you want to hear? Yes. <laughs> Sir, the woman said, I can see that you're a prophet. Uh -huh. oh, man. From a Jew to Sir to prophet. Uh -huh. Now, this question has changed because you need to change your perception. You, how you perceive anything determines what you get from it. If you do not perceive right, you're not going to get it right. And that's why I say, if I mentor you or minister to you for six months and your life is not changing, please go to another church. I will release you. I am useless to you. That's why it's a dangerous thing if you do not perceive the servants of God as they are. You're going to get nothing. Because how you perceive anything determines what you get out of it. It is not an issue of the anointing. It is an issue of your perception. That's why you can be as anointed as Jesus was. Who was anointed like Jesus? But in his congregation, there was a Judas. Because he perceived him as an opportunity to cash in. He never perceived Jesus as the Messiah, the life giver, the purpose giver. Come on now. So, Jesus addresses this issue. And uh, because repentance is addressed, uh, can you enter here? So, sir, but then he says, now, in here, in here, in here. Don't you worry about your hair. You came to act. We will, we will define you. Now, enter here. Can you enter here? Now, uh, no, stand here, stand here. Let's not mess up with your hair. That could be a young man here. Just stand here. Stand here. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now, she has penetrated the first curtain. Now, we're going to get rid of the, the second curtain. This is what this woman says. Uh, the, the other thing that is blocking her breakthrough. So, I can see that you're a prophet. Then she goes like, our ancestors worshipped in this mountain. But you Jews claim that, you, that the place where you must worship is in Jerusalem. Are you understanding? Yeah. So, do you know what she has brought to the picture? Religion. Religion is the next thing that blocks you from experiencing God. And Jesus decides, I'm going to address it also. He says, woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain, nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Salvation is not of the Jews, it is from the Jews. This is why so many Christians don't experience God. And the reason they don't experience God is because religion has come to play. Come on now. Has come into interference with what God has for them. Have you heard people say, like uh, one of my friends who was so deluded, I think it's delusion of grandeur, and, and they were saying that, uh, that, uh, that, 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 that the gospel is a white man's gospel because Jesus was white. Did you see that? Yeah. You have heard such things? Yeah. Now, that is religion blocking people from experiencing who God is. And, and Jesus is addressing that here. He's saying salvation is from the Jews because anything has to come from somewhere. It is, I want you to realize, can, can, can I tell you a phrase that will deliver you from those white Jesus stuff? Jesus is not white, neither is he black. Jesus decided to wear the skin of a Jew. Because before Jesus was born, he existed. And he existed as God. It is just that the legal way for any man to come on earth, if we talk of spiritual legality, legalities, is through a woman. 
And, and because we had denied God to interfere with men, he had to again go back, get a man and a woman called Abraham. Ah, come on now. Get, get, get a family so that he can save a nation. Get a nation so that he can save the world. Are you getting it? Yes. Yeah. So, so salvation came from the Jews because of Abraham. Come on now. Praise the Lord. Amen. But it does not make Je Jesus white. Jesus is God. He's not white. He's not black. He just wore, ah, come on now, Amen. the skin, which is Jewish skin. I thought you would be more liberated than that. Amen. Oh, uh, anyone who have come across that thought that uh, this is a white man's gospel? Yes. Ah, yeah, yeah. That's the deception comes from this kind of thinking. But Jesus says, woman, reply, uh, he replied, a time is coming when you will worship me. Be down this mountain, Noah, in Jerusalem, for somebody that's worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know for salvation is from. Can you say from? from. Never forget that. Yet a time is coming, and now it has come. Can you say now it has come? Now. When the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers. Not, 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 not race, not tribe. They are the kind of worshippers. The Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshippers must worship in spirit and in truth. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now, this is, the, this, is the, this is the beautiful line. The woman said, I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one who is speaking, to you, I am he. From that moment, you see now, he has come from Jew. The curtain broke. Amen? The curtain of religion broke. And she was able to experience God. Amen. And I want you to learn something. You can have a seat, have a seat. Let me close it here. You, you stay here. Praise the Lord. The curtain of religion broke down and she was able to experience God. And then when you can see the growth, the way God walked with her from Najib to Sir to Prophet to now Messiah. Can you clap and praise the Lord? And by the time she's done, I won't read the other part, but I can, she not only experienced who Jesus was, her life was transformed and she became like Jesus. She got her destiny impartation. She became also a prophetess, running across saying, come see a man ministry. <laughs> because when you experience God, perhaps you can play something. I'm done. When you experience who God is, you will also begin to experience who you really are. Because the Bible says we are all hidden in Him. So the way to find yourself is not on a backpack, on a journey. You know the crazy things people are doing? Yeah. Kind of weird generation. <laughs> I'm going to find myself. You know what I'm saying? With a limb on a measure, you'll come here as confused as a broken compass. <laughs> and let me tell you, the only way to find yourself is in God because you're hidden in Him. So if you find God, you find you. So she found God from a, a prostitute coming down through the curtains breaking on her face that she was able to access Jesus. And by the time she experienced Jesus, the, the, this glory, the, the glory that she experienced was too much for her to keep it to herself. She was like, ah, everybody else can experience this. Everybody can see a man. Can't see a man. This is the one. This is it. And that's, that's what evangelism is. It is not a, an assignment where you're pushed to the podium as an evangelist and you don't want to preach. You're like, you're like, praise the Lord. No, no, no. It, an evangelism is literally when you experience who God is. And if you really experience it, you cannot hold it. One of the signs that you have experienced God is you consistently invite people to God, to church, to experience God. Because there's a thing in you that was like, 
This I cannot keep it for myself. And I want everybody here right now to experience God. I want chains to break. I want suicidal thoughts that have been roaming in these streets to break. I want fear to break. I want you to begin to pray in your spirit right now. I want you to begin to focus on God. I want you to begin to break those two curtains, curtains of religion. If you do not perceive right, you are not going to get your breakthrough. I'm also telling you, if you come to this church and after a long time you don't perceive us as servants of God, please go, look for another church. We will be useless to you. I'm not insulting you, I'm telling you the truth. Listen to me. Switch off the sound, uh, your keyboard. Are you understanding? The power of perception. If you don't perceive right, you don't get right. Oh, Jesus. Holy Spirit, what can I tell them? Give me an example. Oh, yeah. There's a friend I knew. If you want to pray, you can pray. There's a friend I knew who... Have you seen so many Kenyans going to Saudi Arabia, Dubai, whichever, US, America? And, and there's no problem. I have no problem with that. Personally, I don't think my opportunities are there. I believe my opportunities are with God and God is everywhere so he can bless me anyway. Yeah. That's my belief. And both me and Carol, we got opportunities to fly out before we even married. And we had jobs waiting for us and we said no to them. Are you understanding? And my mom could not comprehend what I was saying. Because she was saying, she would be saying, That's Dalawea. United States. I'm telling you, have you seen so many people leave the country to go look for opportunities? I have a friend who left Kenya, went to work in Dubai. And he went to work in Dubai because he used to live in my house. I hosted him for some time. When he came back from Dubai, I asked him, where do you work? I asked him several questions. He told me, I work in this company. And the funny thing is, it's owned by a Kenyan. And I said, intriguing. You see the story is, a Kenyan builds a business in Kenya, grows so big, becomes a conglomerate. Praise the Lord. They can come and try. Praise the Lord. <laughs> because they are judging me. Nicholas, you are. <laughs> I, I went to community school. The, the school had no gate. Praise the Lord. What do you expect? I, 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 we thought uh, these told the kids, then it ended up being the teachers told the kids. You can see how crazy it was. <laughs> anyway, praise the Lord. He starts a business, becomes an empire, branches out, starts a business in, in Dubai. A Kenyan, listen to this, who cannot perceive the opportunities here, runs, and even when he ends up, he gets employed by somebody who can perceive the opportunity of where he came from. What I'm trying to tell you is, if you cannot perceive that there's opportunities even in your own country, you cannot get any. Perception is everything. It operates in everything. How you see, the Bible says, both the rich and the poor, God gives them sight. It is what you do is what you see. The rich here is a, is a complex of oppressor. Both the oppressor. Because the oppressor is the rich one. Are you understanding? Because the Bible says the, 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 the oppressor is the one who lends to the poor. And he's lending because he's rich. Amen? Amen? So if you cannot perceive well, you can receive well. Let, let me take it even further. Let me say something we normally say at home. Somebody can take the life you have been given and live better. And do great things that you yourself you'll come to their altar call of destiny. Somebody else can be given everything that you're losing with, and they begin to succeed with it. Somebody else can even be given this one I refuse, but somebody else can even be given your wife that you're losing with, and they succeed. 
Paka ushangai. And we normally say these things to build our philosophies that we will not allow. I must be the best thing to my wife. She must be the best thing to me. I come on now. Because if you perceive wrong, you cannot, you will get wrong. Have you ever noticed that some of your towns, where you come from, the people who are rich who have built buildings, they came. They are not the original guys. Yeah, because of what? Perception. They can come and see what you can see. And that applies even to servants of God. If you do not perceive as well, you are not going to receive anything we have. Anyone with keys? Keys, a bunch of keys. I, I want to teach you something quick. Then I close it on this point. Any keys? Any keys? <laughs> Can see you have a, a two-room house. Praise God. I am a bachelor. No problem. Anyone with a lot of keys? Oh, yes. Yes. There's a lot. Better to see you. It will work. She called no comments. Praise the Lord. <laughs> well, there's people who go to, the, to, to a big hotel and but by mistake, they carry the keys. <laughs> I know, I'm joking. <laughs> but then in my car, I have keys from a, a hotel we had gone to. I carried by mistake. <laughs> Remind me to return them. <laughs> so it's a, it's a personal joke. Are you understand what I'm saying? I want you to notice in the Bible, play something. There is, there is a, a prison. I won't fall. I know some people are praying for me. <laughs> let, me let me not go to the edge. Amen. Oh, pray for daddy. Yes, he said, oh, he's a bitch. No, praise the Lord. <laughs> Every time Jesus was saying something, he was teaching the masses. When he would talk to, every time you heard Jesus teach, it would be different to every group. And I want you to notice, when he's teaching the masses, 30,000 people, he kept the message simple. He kept it at Beatitudes. Are you understanding? But when he gathered his 12 disciples, he would say things that were a bit complex, a bit deep. And one of the things that he taught them, he told them, you guys have given you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Holy Spirit, I pray you help these people understand this in Jesus' name. Amen. To you have given you the keys to the kingdom of The keys are not with everybody. I know you love those evangelistic words. But the keys are not with everybody. When you understand the deep things of the kingdom, even certain levels of demons, you cannot deal with them. You deal with them according to the keys God has given you and he called you as a servant of God. And, and, and what he, told, he then tells them, whatever you buy will be bound. Whatever you lose will be loosed. These are not people who are just got and born again yesterday. These are people who he has called, who he has set aside. And the Bible says he has given them keys. And keys is mandate. Keys is authority. They have the authority. They have the authority. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. Amen. On perception. The first thing you must understand early enough is who has your keys you will be as damn damn as damn damn it if you do not know who has your keys let me give you a story the other day we we quickly took our new couple in town to their honeymoon suit we got them the best hotel in Kenya, hallelujah. Amen. So he took them there, and uh, the following morning, that was Yitzhak and uh, Bridget. So we made sure me and mom everything is okay. They are best couple, we are more than best, they are just very best couple. Best couple, can you give them a clap? Make sure the bed is beautiful, it's a long bed because Yitzhak is very long, you know. <laughs> Wanted to make sure all the legs can fit. 
sure there's enough pillows so that Bridget can reach the pillow. You know those people who swim on the bed? They <laughs> reach the pillow because they're very short. Amen. Then we left them. We had booked them an air ticket for them to fly for vacation out of the prophetic one that came. You remember? God said they will actually fly for vacation. So we said amen and we told God to provide. Amen. And by the way, we do not we did not pay to force the word of God to come to pass. I remember after that word, Papsa kept pushing me, as you book, book the plane, book the plane. <laughs> Told him, no, we're not booking the plane. We are going to book with surplus. Because if God said he's gonna provide, then he's gonna provide. The day there is surplus, call me. <laughs> so we went to the to the pre-wedding. And uh, I asked him, what do you need? He told me, I need only 200,000. We prayed, God, let there be more than enough. We want more than 300,000. We got 320,000. So I told him, we can now book. He said, yeah. yeah, praise the Lord. And I was like, that's nice. Amen. Amen. So he booked. Now, the this, this story, I, I'm just appetizing the single man to have faith in God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That God can beautify your life. Yeah. That God can pick you from behind that. If you knew who Papse was, <laughs> praise the Lord. But I want a man. But I want a man that God can bless you. You can ask, uh, you can go and bribe. Uh, and I mean, Ian is affordable. 50 bob and I'm first for you. And I'm a Papse. Ah, I can go up here. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you, praise the Lord. So, but that, that's not the story. So, I was just giving you a hint for you to understand something. Reduce the volume, if you don't. Jesus. Stay in prayer. What God is doing to you to do to the others, pray for the others. It's not a very serious idea. So, they were so much because we had booked them, mom booked them very early flight. So, they were because we wanted them, and I called. Uh, the hotels where they were flying to because we know a few hotels thank God and I made a special arrangement cashed in my name and I told them uh, I want you to organize a breakfast for them near the ocean praise the Lord amen. just treat them nicely let them let them enjoy amen. amen so they were not even supposed to eat breakfast there because you see you check in like after 2 p.m. But they were to arrive at the hotel at, uh, at 9, 8. So their flight was very early. Like they were waking up at for that. So because of the hurry and the excitement and a uh, beautiful shorty wife, praise the Lord. Yes, okay, no, no, no. Anyway, I don't know what happened. They forgot the keys to the hotel. So they went with the keys of the high-end hotel. So the hotel called me and told me, uh, please... Uh, you made this arrangement, check if the keys are available. I told them they are available. Uh, they, they went with them to honeymoon. I'll be getting them back soon. I'll bring them to your hotel. They say no problem, we'll be using the spare. Now, all these stories had only one sense. There's somebody, there's a, an Uber guy who picked the keys to the airport and is gonna bring them to me today and I'll take them tomorrow or the day after. If I take those wonderful titanium keys and I put them together with my keys how much help can those keys give me? Anyone? Any genius? How useful are those keys to me? The last thing you want to steal is keys. People don't steal keys because they are useless to you. Are you understanding? But they are everything to the owner of the keys. They are everything. So when God calls his servants and gives them keys to the people of God, those keys are useless to me. But they are everything to you. Because you will go and you will be wondering, why can this door be opened? Don't play with 
servants of God in our hearts. We don't play. We pre if I was to tell you how we treat servants of God, you would feel fine. Are you understanding? We don't play. Lest they have our keys. Are you understanding? So it's very important that you discern fully. Because if I am carrying your keys, they are useless to me. And your doors will remain closed until the day you perceive who has your keys. You may take time like the Samaritan woman to discern from the height. But I'm telling you, God does not do it anything on earth without revealing it to his servants, the prophet. Why? Because he gave them keys. I never understood the power of keys. I actually started repenting one time. Because I felt like, like I am, something is wrong with me. Because all my friends would go to a fasting. And then if I would say their names, you would know them. But I don't want to say their names. Not just one, plural friends. They would go even to a 40-day fast. Me, I was not a, a fasting kind of a guy. So I'm fasting me. Praise the Lord. I'm just being honest. I know it's not common with pastors saying that. Me, I fast. Even yesterday I fasted for him. And I almost woke up to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get encouragement from to source encouragement from mom. To the head, the has <laughs> I, I'm saying, I was fasting and I was taking very strong medicine and I was feeling woozy and I was feeling I am I'm trusting God for people in the service to experience God. for ten years. When he can just get an epiphany in one minute like that. And, and things begin to happen. I, I don't want to see anyone struggle, man. I, 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 we hate, me and my wife, we hate people to see people struggle. It is recently we have started training ourselves to keep off from some people's struggles because some people, it's like the prodigal son, they can only learn by pain. That's the truth. That's the truth. So it's, it's tough. You go shed that tear, but you're like, okay, you go learn. And some people, they will actually break a leg, literally. You know how we say break a leg? Reason. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm begging you, design who has your keys. And if you come to this church and after six months, no door is opening, nothing is happening, your life is not changing, please change church. I'll release you. Me, I'm not those pastors who are clinging. We don't even get paid by this church. We get paid by God through our businesses. We have more than seven companies. Are you understand what I'm saying? This is uh, my 18th year in ministry and I don't receive a single money. We actually spend on the church. Are you understand what I'm saying? So it's not like I'm not those clingy pastors who are like, I don't want to lose you, mercy, because you eight thousand can I enter? No, I don't care. Praise the Lord. Please, I want to see if, 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 if you don't perceive that I'm a servant of God, if you don't perceive that you're going to get your breakthrough through this ministry, please go to another one. Ask God, who is the servant of God? Who has my keys? Go to them. I'll pray. I will release you. Actually, there's a high chance. Who you are you to enter? Who you are you to There's a girl who left our church back then in rebellion saying, this, this, this church. Anderson is my mentor. The foreigners are there. True story. But they, it's so funny. It's so funny. It's, it's a dark joke. But it's true. Because for me and my wife, we work, we don't work with just with Christian ministers, we work with all over. Kinato Motino are my friends. That's why I brought them to Nani's wedding. Praise the Lord. We work with every servant of God. So, so as we are beyond the denomination, with the titles, you Chris God. No, we will serve the Lord. But I'm asking you, design the keys. Which altar has your keys? And one of the ways to know you're in the right place is two things. 
the people in the keys are the people you'll be attacked. Your image towards them will be attacked, whether you like it or not. People don't slander and talk about ashes. Amen. As much as ashes, you, you do a good job. <laughs> you remember? This is part of the sermon. You remember that the story started with slander? That the Pharisees were saying that Jesus, ah, come on now. Yes. Yeah. He has been baptizing. The oh God, oh, more people than John the Baptist. He, they brought competition in the kingdom. Are you understanding? Yeah. Strife. It's, it's very important. Because I want to see your life change. Who has your keys? If I take your keys and I go with them home, what do you think? In, in a creative person, what do you think I can do with his keys? Ah. What, what, what do you think will happen to him when he goes in front of his door and he has no keys? Ah, any genius? Praise the Lord. That's why some Christians are busy beating doors with an axe. Some axe of 40 days fasting. Why can't this door open? Small keys open big doors. <laughs> Fix your attitude so that you don't miss God. I, can, I, I don't have any control on that. It's a sad thing. Only you can determine. But you can see, I was telling Carol, the Bible says you shall know them by their fruits. Amen? Amen. But yesterday I was so encouraged and so inspired because when I started mentoring Yitzhak, I know he's my brother-in-law, but when I was mentoring him, he was not my brother-in-law. He, he, he came from a very dark background, I won't talk about it. I will wait for the 50 opportunity for you to discuss it. Praise the Lord. And I remember sitting down with him and he was surrounded by bad company. His eyes were red. Amen. <laughs> And I, and I don't think he was, he was cooking with firewood. And I taught him how to write goals. I remember I gave him money to buy a, a, a hardcover book. He, he bought a 32 pages book and he wrote in, in four lines about his goals. And I remember telling him the people who are wicked right now that you're envying one day in the next five years, they will sit down and watch you live a life they cannot afford. And he was like, really? I told him, yes, you can do it. Yes, it's possible. You can fix your life. That guy fixed his life from so far that right now, he even discovered that he is a, a genius when it comes to IT. But in school, he did not pass as much. You know the reason we don't have many leaders is because we don't have many people who speak the truth. Are you understanding what I'm saying? I think also his headmaster would be shocked. That he's actually a lecturer right now and he's the best. Amen. Are you understanding? Amen. So, yesterday he sent me a photo from where he goes to church. He was just chosen yesterday as a, as a, one I want to know, to our elders in the church. You know? wow. Somebody just started raising the other day. <laughs> and this is the funny part. There's people I know in Crisco who I begged them to walk with him. Who even refused, but he has surpassed them. <laughs> and I was looking at that and I was like, oh, perception, interesting. Because how you perceive something determines how much you're going to get from it. If you look at this nation, you say there's nothing here. There'll be nothing there. If you look at your wife, and say she's useless, that's what she will be to you. But if you realize that Caro is a blessing, when a man finds a woman, finds favor with God, before you pray for 40 days, you have favor. Ah, come on now. Yes. Imagine, God will tell them, go to Anderson, kneel down, and he prays for you. And I would go and really repent. I would ask them, please don't. There's a time to do concern on one of my friends. He told me, ah, talker, you cannot deal before me, you're my senior. No, not really. You know me, what are you fasting for? Come on, I have this list. I've answered all your, your prayers. Stop fasting. I said, no. I fasted three more days. And the Holy Spirit came back and told me, now you're on the 27th day. Why are you fasting? 
I said to answer my prayers. Did I tell you? Okay. Then, then I asked myself, by the way, why am I fasting? Then I asked the Holy Spirit, why am I fasting? He told me, you're, you're fasting because all your friends fast a long time. And you also want to fast and say, you have also fasted for 40 days. I was like, oh, yeah. I really wanted that record. <laughs> I'm serious. And to this day, he has never let me reach there. The closest I could reach was, I think, that there's something that the fool. Then he, he stopped me. And I noticed my journey is a bit different. Say keys. So as we repent, because, and I'm not just, this is not a word for us, amen? amen. Even in a church you'll ever go to. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You gotta know where your keys are and protect your perception. Because your perception towards the key people will be attacked. Amen? Amen. Let's stand on our feet. I hope you get what I'm saying. Jesus. This is a very sacred moment. I did not... I, I normally don't fast. I was telling... I, I normally don't like do serious fasting for services, but yesterday, I just wanted to do it. I was not even led of the Holy Spirit. I just decided as Anderson. Because I was begging God, I would like people to experience you. I'd like the barriers to break. Because we can live in this salvation as if it's a trap. And I want you to go before God. I want you to do whatever you want to experience, to experience God. Begin to pray.